Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware, and recently AMD announced Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR for short, which is a performance reclaiming technology that upscales lower resolution input frames from game engines to a higher resolution, but also gaining you back a significant boost in frame rate as well. Now, since the technology was announced, folks have been pixel peeping the available game titles that are out on the market that support FSR currently, and they've been magnifying it up to 5x and stopping frames and looking at image quality. And I'm here to say that pixel peeping FSR in a live motion game engine is basically pointless. And I'm going to show you why next. First, a little housekeeping. This video coverage of Fidelity FX Super Resolution is sponsored by AMD. However, AMD did not influence our perspective or editorial commentary in any way, nor did they preview this content before publication. To test out AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR for short, we chose two very mainstream graphics cards as our primary test vehicles, AMD's Radeon RX 5500 XT on the lower end, and the more mid-range but still previous-gen Radeon on RX 5700 XT. These two GPUs should give us a sense of performance for the average gamer, and they're also very popular previous-gen graphics cards in general that we wanted to see if FSR could breathe new life into. But before we start digging into the numbers and visuals, here's a quick refresher on what AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution actually does. For one, the technology is going to be made open source on AMD's GPU open platform under an MIT license. It will also work on even older generation Radeon GPUs as well as competitive NVIDIA GPUs dating back to GeForce GTX 10 series vintage at least and potentially forthcoming GPUs from Intel. It'll technically run on any GPU with cores fast enough to process the FSR compute shaders, though at least in FSR's current form, few integrated graphics engines will be powerful enough for it. It's a game engine level optimization, not a driver thing, though AMD will only provide warranty and support for its own hardware. But I digress. Here's the one slide from AMD's presentation that explains most of what you should understand about the technology. Targeting a 4K output game setting here on the top and 1440p output on the bottom of this visual, you can see at each setting, ultra quality, quality, balanced, and performance performance modes, how far down in resolution FSR will scale to improve performance. For example, a 4K output in FSR quality mode will actually have an internal rendering resolution of 1440p before being upscaled and sharpened with AMD's edge adaptive spatial upsampling and robust contrast adaptive sharpening algorithms. Then it's sent out to the remainder of the rendering and post-processing effects pipeline. Clear as mud? Good. I'll drop a link in the description below to AMD's GPU open site if you'd like to bone up a bit more on the technology. It's a little deep, but it's impressive, actually. The thing to also remember here, however, is that no matter what, since the internal rendering resolution of various FSR modes are still lower than the native resolution output, we're still throwing pixels away and then upscaling and sharpening. So there will always be some loss. The question is, can your eye actually perceive it in the game when in motion? Let's take a look. Right then, with all of that out of the way, let's get a look at some visuals and dig in deep with Rift Breaker. This is a new base building action RPG with a classic top-down view perspective from indie game developer Exor Studios. It's based on a DX11 class game engine called the Schmetterling 2.0. How's your Schmetterling? Mine's fine, thanks for asking. Schmetterling actually is the German word for butterfly, and the XOR team says its game engine is similarly light, beautiful, and fast, like a butterfly. You're looking at it currently on max image quality settings running at a native 4K resolution without FSR enabled. Now, let's rerun the same clip with FSR ultra quality settings. I'm looking closely here, but I personally do not see any difference in image quality setting at all, and it may be better to just look at FSR's quality mode for a bit and rerun the same clip of the benchmark. Take a good look at this first. This is ultra quality and then we'll move on to quality. Did you see a difference? Well, here's quality mode and once again I'm hard pressed to see any variance in image quality and it looks fine to me but frame rate has moved up significantly from about the mid 40s frames per second to about mid 70s frames per second in quality mode 
But what about balanced or performance mode? Let's take a look. Here's the same benchmark loop running in balanced mode, and for me, I can just start to see some softness in the fire reflections and the texture detail of the red mushroom caps, and maybe a touch in the shiny stalagmite-like structures that are jutting up from the ground. However, personally, I'm not seeing that much of a difference. But let's get a look at performance mode. In performance mode, I tend to see general softness in a lot of areas, whether you look at the mushrooms, stalagmites, or even in the tree detail. As AMD notes, performance mode definitely impacts visual quality, and this setting should only be selected in situations where performance is critical. That makes sense. In reality, it's probably better to just drop the resolution and then dial your in-game image quality settings and compare between performance mode at 4K or what native 1440p or 1080p might yield you in terms of visual quality and frame rate. So part of our strategy thus far for comparisons has been targeted at requiring you to decide for yourself what you think looks acceptable without the benefit of real-time side-by-side comparison. In other words, what can your eyes and brain remember between these clips without actually seeing them side-by-side -side to help you decide what looks better? It's not that easy, is it? Now, let's look at a few clips side by side. First, let's look at quality FSR mode at 4K versus native 4K rendering side by side. The first thing that's obvious to me is that on the right side, you see quality FSR mode running much smoother overall in terms of motion, whereas the left side has a few more hiccups and stutters along the way, though it's not bad. Other than that, I struggle to see the difference in image quality here, even when stopping the video to examine a single frame. And no, stopping a frame and zooming in with multiple times magnification is not the right way to evaluate this, because it's simply not the way you'd play the game. Now let's look at native versus performance mode side by side. Here again, I do see general softness overall, both in object textures like the red mushroom caps and the crystal stalagmites jutting up through the ground, in the trees and in the rocks, etc. In general, the scene simply looks slightly blurrier on the right side with FSR performance mode enabled. However, fluid animation still looks better than choppy frame rate to me, though that's your call. And to that end, looking at the frame rates in the benchmark runs, however, the choice is clearer. Ultra quality and quality modes get you comfortably over the 60 FPS mark, with quality mode maintaining well north of 60 FPS, even for its 1% low frame rates. These are nice gains for excellent visual quality. Now let's shift gears to Godfall, an action role-playing first-person game that was released by Gearbox late in 2020. The visuals here are a bit more lush and impressive, and the game engine is definitely a bit more taxing. We're running this on a more powerful but still previous-gen AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. This time it can just eke out playable frame rates north of 30 FPS at 4K resolution and the game's epic image quality settings. The slight stutter and lag is palpable though. Ultra quality FSR mode gets us up closer to 40 FPS with slightly smoother gameplay and no visual differences that I can see. There really is no difference here, to my eagle eye anyway, so let's peek at quality mode. Ah, now that's the stuff. Frame rate is much smoother here, pushing near 50 FPS, and again, I'm not seeing anything in this footage that says I've lost much visual fidelity. Do you? And flipping on balanced FSR mode, now I'm still not seeing much of a difference at closer to 60 FPS. But I keep asking myself, am I being too generous? Am, am I in denial? Nah, I don't know. I'm going to need the side-by-side -side for this mode to make that determination, but first, Let's look at performance mode. Surely that will show the same softness we saw before in Rift Breaker. And indeed, that does seem to be the case, as generally speaking, the rendered result is softer all around here from texture quality to object and character edge detail. So now let's take a look at the side-by-sides. Here we have native 4K rendering on the left with FSR balanced mode on the right. Can you see the difference? In my view, immediately at the start there are some minor artifacts in the edges of the steps perhaps, and the ornate pillars might look a little bit softer, maybe, 
but balanced mode still looks pretty darn good in my opinion. And going from about 39 FPS to almost 57 FPS, I'd take the frame rate gains hands down. I mean, you really have to look hard to detect these differences, whether you're viewing them here on YouTube or if I view them in the source files that I use to create this video. Unfortunately, this game's NPCs are dynamically generated in this benchmark, so we can't have the same characters doing the same things on both clips, but balance mode looks pretty darn good. Looking at performance mode side by side, and we can see what it looks like versus native 4K, and I'm seeing a significant amount of blur here now, even beyond the obvious motion blur and shake that exists in this game. It seems like balanced mode is the sweet spot with respect to Godfall, with very solid visuals and much better frame rate versus native 4K. And you could even make a case for dropping down performance a touch to quality mode FSR settings in exchange for a little less frame rate. However, sacrificing image quality for a few more FPS in performance mode here doesn't seem worth it to me. And the benchmark numbers jibe with that as well. In short, the 50 to 60 FPS range can be had with FSR on quality or balance mode in this game title with a modest Radeon RX 5700 XT GPU. And the visuals will look plenty crispy at 4K output. Pick your poison, or should I say magic elixir here, but with balanced mode offering up a 47 plus percent performance gain and quality mode offering north of 25% would say FSR is a no-brainer for leveling up 4K visuals in this game title. So there you go, you've seen the straight-on comparisons of two very different game genres and you've seen the side-by-side -side live motion footage. The key is we didn't stop frames and zoom into 5x magnification or whatever to look at pixels. Why? Because that's not how you play the game. In our view, zooming in on a single frame and peering at pixels is a waste of time. In reality, any of AMD's balanced quality or ultra quality modes are plenty serviceable in terms of image quality and the frame rate gains are pretty fantastic, at least in the few game titles that currently officially support the fledgling open source technology called FSR. Though we've heard reports already that someone has ported GTA 5 to support FSR. Cool stuff, we'll drop a link in the description for that as well. So the bottom line is, in our opinion, it's only in FSR's performance mode that we think you'll see a notable difference in image quality, in exchange, of course, for a massive lift in frame rate. However, at the ultra quality and quality presets, we think you'll be hard pressed to notice the difference, especially in fast moving game titles, and maybe even perhaps in the balance mode setting as well. So it's all about dialing in your preferred image quality level in exchange for the performance level you want. But Capturing frames and peering at pixels is not where it's at. But make sure you swing by HotHardware.com's full deep dive review of AMD's FSR for additional analysis, details, and benchmarks in other game titles as well. And if you would, please hit thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified when we put up new core computing tech coverage or if we go live with our ever entertaining Two and a Half Geeks live stream. It's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware with a real world look at AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Let's hope it rolls out to a few more game titles soon in the days ahead. And thanks for stopping by.